Good morning. We are here with Patrick Woods from Orbit. Uh, Patrick, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Looking forward to hearing you talk about open source and community and metrics and what we mean by all of these things. So please introduce yourself and take it away. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Boris. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, so glad to reconnect and to meet all of you. Uh, Patrick, I'm CEO of Orbit. And I've, I've got a deck that I'll just fire up so I don't have to repeat myself on any of this stuff. Uh, so today we're going to talk about understanding your community with uh, the Orbit model. And we'll dig into what that means along the way. Uh, but this is me. I'm Patrick. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Orbit. Uh, that's me on the screen. Uh, our team is distributed across San Francisco and Paris. And so when we have to take team photos, it's, uh, we have to get creative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is this is us celebrating a, a recent milestone, and uh, that's Nicola, one of our engineers in the middle, and Josh, my co-founder and CTO on the right end. Uh, we're a small team; we're just getting started, uh, but but hopefully, the, some of the stuff we'll talk about today will seem useful for for you and your your projects and your your companies. So, uh, just for background, we're going to talk about a couple of different concepts today. Uh, we'll talk about the Orbit model and and Orbit the company, and the genesis of this will, will come through hopefully as we as we dig in, um, but the model is a, is, is a conceptual framework uh, and it's, it's the product is a way to operationalize and automate that framework at scale. So we'll spend most of our time today on the model itself since hopefully the model as, as, a, as, a, as a concept and framework is, is helpful whether or not you're using our product. But um, the sort of the, the history here is the Orbit model as sort of an idea has, has been um, a, an idea that Josh and I have kicked around for many years and then last year it sort of picked up steam and we decided to, to build a company to operationalize it. Um, so <clears throat> what, yeah, what, what is the Orbit model? So pop quiz time, first thing in the morning, or at least first thing in the morning for us on the West Coast. Is the Orbit model a, one as a, a space themed mental model for building communities born out of working with developers? Is it B, a metaphor for community in the way that funnel is a metaphor for marketing and sales? C, vocabulary and metrics for measuring the impact and ROI of community. D, an open source project that you could contribute ideas and documentation and experience to. Or E, a, an algorithm for doing bitwise or operations. So if you guess A through D, you are correct. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's all of these things. Uh, there's a Venn diagram of these concepts, I'm, I, I would guess, but it's, it's a mental model, it's a metaphor. Um, it's a new vocabulary. I like to think of it as a, as a, as a new map for the community terrain. And, and, it's, and it's an open source project. Uh, it all lives on GitHub. Uh, and, it, and it seeks to answer questions like, how do I measure my community's engagement and growth? And which members should I prioritize spending time with? And what contribution should I ask each community member to make? And how much value are we creating for the community overall? <laughs> and there's a few objectives. When, when, we, when we sort of started to build out the model, there were several objectives in mind. So uh, on, on, there, there's sort of two big buckets we think about uh, at a high level is member experience and then team impact. And so member experience is things like faster community activation and a smoother onboarding experience for people and higher retention because they're, uh, the community is feeling like they're being taken care of and um, engaged with heavily. And then on the team impact side, these are questions like metrics and reporting and organ better organization and building scalable programs. And, and really the, the model was, was born out of um, many years of our experience working with developer communities, both at companies and uh, that, that we've worked at, uh, as well as in the consulting practice that my co-founder and I had, and then more recently at Orbit the company. And really one of the driving uh, uh, sort of um, aha moments for us was through working with tons and tons of companies, we realized that the predominant commercial metaphor since 1898, believe it or not, is the sales and marketing funnel. Uh, that, that concept goes back pretty far and a lot's changed since 1898. And we realized that the, the, the funnel as a metaphor is, is useful when you're trying to drive a cohort of, of people to the same outcome uh, and that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, for sort of a linear process. Um, but but the, model, the funnel is linear and binary and um, it only works when you're start, sort of trying to point everyone to that same goal. But if you know anything about community, it's, it's neither linear nor binary and that, that people in a community kind of land where they're going to land. And so we realized in our, in our you know, consulting practice that so many companies that were trying to build their community, uh, open source or otherwise, were struggling with the language around it. Um, and so the Orbit model really is an attempt to provide 
a framework and a language for how communities really evolve and they really grow. It's built from the ground up with community in mind. So uh, it's it's in process. Um, you know, we've, we've been at it for, for about a year now, I guess, the, the first blog post about the orbit model went up, well, maybe a year and a half ago at this point, uh, but we're learning a lot. <laughs> so there's, there's three key concepts that we're gonna unpack today. Orbit levels, love, and reach. And these are kind of the constituent components of, of the orbit model. And the theory is that if, if you understand things like who in your who's in your community, what they're doing, and, and when they did it, you can model out a lot about the way your communities are growing or contracting. So, so you, you're saying you're saying community, uh, and I know you're focused um, on sort of code or developer centric communities. Yep. Um, do you think that this is a model that applies more broadly? Yeah, great, great question, and thank you for for bringing that up. Uh, it's 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 absolutely uh, what we're seeing is is these we think that the concepts in the model are, are essentially first principles for how any, any organization or any group of people um, sort of grows over time or contracts. And uh, most of the sort of an early adopters of the orbit model are to your point, definitely open core, commercial, open source companies, developer companies, platforms, but we're seeing um, designer communities, artist communities, music communities applying this type of thinking. And so I think one, one key distinction I would say is that you know, if, if the sales and marketing funnel is really good for capturing value for a company, the orbit model is really helpful in thinking about how to create value for the community. And so we think that's, that's useful for all sorts of community types. And that the, the, the concepts like orbit level and love and reach, I think you'll, you hopefully will see how they, they could apply to communities of all types. Um, and one of, one of the things we, we try to do is strike a balance between prescriptive language and guidance at, you know, at one end of the spectrum um, with the other end of the spectrum being like, a com you know, a completely flexible framework. So we're trying to strike a balance between sort of some of the ideas we've seen actually in practice across communities uh, with the model being flexible enough to apply it to your own specific situation. Um, so thanks, thanks for asking that. <coughs> so, so this is, this is the over, sort of the overview, the, the, the visual canvas of the orbit model. Uh, this is all on GitHub. Uh, the organization is orbit dash love and slash orbit uh, dash model. Uh, we'll have links in the deck and things like that. But, but this is really the, 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 the solar system, if you will. So we'll go through each of these uh, concepts and they kind of dig into some of the math behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, love is a member's level of engagement and activity in the community. We think that, that their, the engagement is um, really measurable by a person's willingness to do things. Uh, these are all, you know, can consider love as verbs. So, you know, someone starts a repo, they do a pull request, they comment, they join the forum, they join the mailing list, they join a channel on Slack, they answer a question. And reach is a measure of a community, community member's sphere of influence. Because uh, we all know, um, <coughs> we've all seen how communities, when uh, they're working well, there's, there's lots of activities happening. There's people, you know, tweeting and sharing and, and sending emails about the community. And really that's how, that's how you see it grow is a sort of uh, word of mouth at scale. And then the orbit levels are, that's a practical tool for member segmentation uh, and really used to de design different programs for each level of the community. And we have, we have four names here, advocates, contributors, participants, observers, but that's, this, that's one of the areas that you can feel free to tweak for your own specific community. Uh, but the idea is that there are, there are concentric circles here um, based on a person's love. So uh, there in the middle of the diagram is, is you and your team. <coughs> The first, the first tier is advocates, uh, Orbit One. This is your inner circle. They're folks that are giving talks, they're creating content. Uh, you probably know them by name. Uh, you probably have a direct line with each of them, um, you know, whether it's in a WhatsApp group or a, a, a Discord um, channel. Your contributors are not quite as close as advocates, but they're, they're pretty close. They're, they're following and engaging with your content on Twitter. Uh, they're in your forum. Maybe they're answering some questions. Uh, participants are folks who have likely adopted your, your tool or technology, but they haven't fully onboarded to the community yet. They're sort of kind of waiting in the wings. And then the, the uh, Orbit 4 is your observers. So these are folks who, who they probably know about your, your product or your brand or your community. Uh, maybe they follow you on Twitter. They maybe have starred your repo, uh, but they, they probably haven't onboarded to your product or your community, but they're just sort of, they've sent a signal and you're aware of them. Uh, and so, so the idea is that if you understand the distribution of your orbit levels, you can uh, deliver programs and engagement for each level, you know, based on the, 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 the love of each person uh, in, in your orbit. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically about what that means. 
So starting with love, love is, is about engagement. This is a quote from one of our, one of our own community members, uh, Aaron Frey, who says, love is the currency that drives community, which I think is a really cool, a really cool concept that she, sh that she shared. Uh, one of the conversations we, we have with, with some people is, why does the orbit, why does the orbit model use love instead of a, a term like engagement? Uh, and for us, it's, uh, we're, we're trying to be very intentional about the language because it, I think, sets the tone for the way, uh, the way culture evolves and emerges. And engagement is, it's a, it's a fine technical term, uh, but it's also sort of burdened with tons of, I don't know, marketing baggage, if you will. Uh, and so, so really for us, we're, we're trying to kind of deposition the traditional thinking around this stuff and really get back to the people. And so love is, love is the, the term we've picked for a number of reasons, but Mer, uh, Aaron really nails it here. Uh, love is the currency that drives community. <laughs> the definition from our docs on GitHub is that it's uh, love is a member's level of engagement and investment in the community. Someone with high love is highly active and plays key roles in the community, like contributing, moderating, and organizing. <clears throat> so five steps to measuring love. Who, who would have thought <laughs> that it's possible? Uh, so we'll, we'll go through the, the math here. Um, and uh, happy to answer questions. This is all in the, the, the docs as well for review later. So um, hopefully, hopefully this is a helpful overview. But one, one thing we're trying to address is the, um, you know, uh, potential, how to say this, you know, fuzziness of community as a concept. Uh, you know, we, we, we want to balance concepts with love, uh, with actual rigor. And so we think uh, the orbit model is, is both a, a way to talk about community with, with, with terms like love, but also have the um, underlying math to say, you know, there are ways to model out the, the way the community is growing uh, or contracting and to understand if our activities, uh, if, if our investment in the community is actually helping the community to grow or, or not. And so we actually have some math uh, for measuring love. <coughs> uh, by the way, we have an Airtable template that you can go download at template.orbit.love. This is, this is basically a, um, it's, it's just a, a, a demo essentially of the math and the thinking that's in the GitHub repo. So you can grab it, you can follow it along. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty close proxy uh, for exactly what's in, what's in the repo. So the first step to understanding the lot is to define your activities. So again, these are verbs. Started the repo, answered a question, hosted a meetup. Uh, really, this is about for you, understanding what activities matter in your community. For open source communities, that these are probably pretty obvious to a lot of us. Uh, to Boris's question earlier, for um, other communities, it might look different. It might be more about um, participating in the forum or coming to events specifically um, versus doing PRs and stars and things. This actually reminds me a little bit of uh, pirate metrics. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, acquisition, uh, activation, retention, uh, referral, et cetera. Like obviously that's a very product centering and, and in that case it ends with revenue. Um, uh, and depending on how you apply this model, but uh, I like the uh, the rigor and framework that that and I, what I've noticed with pirate metrics as well is those are all the same thing. They're very unique to your product. You have to think about what makes sense for for you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, the second step once you so once you understand your activities, there's this this optional step of assigning weights. So this is, there's, there's some nuance to this. Uh, and this is actually, we, we had an RFC on the GitHub repo uh, around some changes to the orbit model and weights and scores were actually one of the most hotly discussed uh, points of view. The, the high level here is that not all activities are created equal and starring a repo might not be worth as worth quote unquote as much as having a pull request merged. So the orbit model does allow for weighting um, and basically saying, you know, this, this is worth slightly more relatively speaking than another activity. Uh, this is completely optional, we would say. Uh, we, we have found over time, um, over the past six months of, of running Orbit the product and sort of seeing how the math shakes out, that um, time is actually probably a better proxy for a person's love. And so we have a decay score built in, we'll talk in, talk about in a moment, but um, this, is, this is a step, feel free to, to, to use this and wait activities. Uh, but the, 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 the advice we say is avoid bike shedding, because uh, what we saw in the actually ver version uh, 1.0 of the Orbit model kind of one through 10 scale. You can imagine all the excitement you can have is like, well, is starring a repo worth two or three? Well, I think it's worth 2.5. And, you know, on the one hand, discussing these things intentionally is really helpful, but on the other hand, it's easy to get lost in the weeds. So can, two can, assigning... you, can, can I just get you to quickly define bike shedding? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, well, there, there's some history to it, but the idea is that 
it's instead of focusing on the problem at hand, uh, it, it's it's when a team gets distracted by a, a sort of an ancillary project. You know, what color should the bike shed you know be versus you know how are we going to solve this really gnarly problem from an engineering standpoint? So, uh, in this case, it's it's the tendency uh, if you you and your team are spinning up the orbit model uh, instead of focusing on like the key activities and defining uh, what what are meaningful metrics. Uh, it's, it would be the temptation to spend a couple of weeks really tweaking the weights and making sure that a pull request versus a tweet are perfectly calibrated and, and kind of getting lost in the forest for the, you know, uh, or, you know instead of. Awesome. Th thanks. I, I'm just, I always try and um, uh, I feel like uh, uh, we have a lot of jargon. Um, and so what I try and do is, uh, uh, and, and we have a, a lot of international participants as well where it doesn't necessarily always uh, uh, translate. Um, so I'll, I think if I don't already, I think I may even have a definition of this one in the forum. So I'll, I'll add that one as well. And th thanks for getting it on video for me. Yeah, of course. This one uh, it, it seems pretty familiar to uh, those of us in the software world, but uh, it's always good to define the, the insider terminology if you don't want people to feel left out. Uh, and feel free to call me out on any of that along the way. Thanks, thanks for that. So, so define your activities, assign the weights if you'd like. The next step is recording activities. So we want to know who did what and when. And so in the, the template here, you can see things like uh, in the first line, someone wrote a blog post. Here's the date. Here's the weight. And then in the, in the template, we actually have a months ago calculation. And then we sort of do a de what we call the decay score. The reason we have decay and we think time is important is because what we, what we have noticed and what we think is the case is that the de facto state of a community member is not stasis. It's actually the tendency to drift away. And if you're not actively re-engaging with them and trying to drive up their love, then they're, they're just going to drift out. And we've all probably been um, a part of communities, quote unquote, where, you know, you come to, you come back to a Slack group that was started a year ago and it's crickets and nobody's, nobody said anything in like six or nine months. And, you know, that, that's because drift is real. And so uh, the orbit model wants to take into account that time. And so that's where the sort of decayed score comes in. Uh, as well. So it's why it's really important to understand, you know, not only who's doing what type of activities, but how recent, how recently did they do them. <clears throat> so the fun part is, is calculating love. <laughs> so, so in the orbit model, love is the sum of activity scores decayed over time. Uh, you can sort of see the, the, the pseudo math here, but the idea is that you would sum the values in, a, in the month and then multiply them by 0.9 to the power of the number of months ago it occurred. And this gives you a little, um, I'm, I'm going to botch the, the mathematical language around this. And my co-founder, Josh, who's our CTO, will probably be very annoyed with me. But uh, the, the scores get smaller over time. <laughs> and then the love, of course, is just the sum of those, of those activities on a monthly basis. So uh, this is all modeled for you in the, in the spreadsheet. You can take it apart and play with it. Um, but really, if, if, if you're able to do this, you can really start to understand for the first time what, what are people doing and, and how is it impacting the growth of the community. Um, as a side note, Orbit, the product will do this for you automatically. So uh, if, if you're interested in sort of automating the stuff, you, we, we, the, the product does that. But uh, we have a number of communities that actually just use these Airtable templates and either enter this information manually or hook up like a Zapier or a, um, Integromat or something like that to the spreadsheet and actually, you know, power it for, for, for a long time. Uh, and then finally, Orbit Levels basically is a uh, this is this is uh, somewhat arbitrary and will depend on your community, but we recommend a step function to group uh, members into orbit based on love. And so, in the orbit product itself, these are the actual ranges that we use. So you can see orbit four is like 0.5. So you can imagine these are folks that haven't done an activity in a number of months, uh, whereas the, the advocates in orbit one are folks that have been much more active more recently. And then, if you if you do that, uh, this is just a screenshot of some of the charts from the Airtable template. So you can actually start to see things like. The distribution of your orbit levels and things like how many uh you know orbit one two and three and four do we have in, in each different city if you have that happen to have that information and start to visualize for the first time what this size and shape of your community actually actually looks like <clears throat> and so the idea with 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 love and orbit levels is you can start to ask these these types of questions that i think are pretty interesting is you know who are our highest level developers you know who's ramping up and who's gone dormant uh, do we have activities in place for members with each degree of love? So, you know, the, the, you know, after you create your list of activities, you might find that, well, all our activities are things like hosting meetups and giving talks. Maybe we need some more uh, lower level activities to help people ramp up and to onboard more effectively. Um, and so on the team impact side, it's like you can ask questions like, how is our love changing over time? Like, what's, 
is that line going up or is it going down? Uh, what changes can we attribute to our work as a, as a team, as a DevRel team? And how does love compare across locations or customer segments? So you can start to say, well, uh, folks that are heavily heavy users of the Python SDK may have this type of love versus the Ruby SDK, this type of love, or by location or by company size, whatever data you happen to have, you can start to, to ask I, what I think are interesting questions around um, the size and shape and the growth, the growth of your community. Uh, so any questions so far on uh, measuring love? No, that's really great. It's a, uh, you know, my mind starts racing in thinking about um, different personas and uh, tech trees. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you want a mage thief uh, to use RPG terminology, just to add more lingo, uh, you know, uh, in the sense that I can think of uh, non-coding contributors uh, or people who take on different roles within the community, um, but then having some consistency a little bit about thinking about what people you have at, 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 uh, at different levels. Um, yep. And uh, Austin's just asking, um, I, I think it's, uh, you'll, you're going to post the deck afterwards, right? Yeah, for sure. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So, so if love is, uh, were there any other questions? And feel free to unmute yourself. You, you have the power, everyone. Okay. Hello. Sorry, I'm, I'm late. My, my daughter's Lenovo updated, although we told it not to update and it looked like it's going to die. So that, that was the crisis. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I wanted to ask this. I, I actually put it in the chat. So I, I'm reading your activities as basically kind of communication channels and significant events within that communication channel. <clears throat> yeah, I would say channel, channel is, is probably a de facto part of it, uh, but not a required part. Really, it's, it's, it's any verb. Uh, but to your point, the, the channel is going to be covered. Yeah, but what I mean, it's not just the verb. It's a verb and and a channel, and if you can think about it, there, are, there may be more than three. Say Twitter is a channel, and there may be more more activities within that. I'm just saying that it's totally. more, it's a yeah, more yeah. general. Yeah. GitHub would have a number of activities. Um, on yeah, Twitter, exactly. You can have, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. tweeted at your account, answered a question. A, a discourse forum might have posted a question versus answered a question. Yeah, yeah totally. But I, I do like it very much. I'm just saying and trying to apply and because the next question is that actually there is there is a bit of that as in the discourse or whatever where where probably it's too too fine grade but some measure of the text analysis may be an interesting thing Talk, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 this is so so yeah i'm happy to yeah we can go really deep on this stuff um what what love doesn't account for is quality uh and and that's 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 kind of a it's sort of a, a, a known unknown, you know, it's like uh, we, we, we're trying to strike the balance between, you know, legibility and complexity in the sense that it's really, it's quite possible to get very intense with a, a very complex, you know, quadratic equation here uh, to, to sort of model love. Uh, we, we, we've landed on activity sort of, you know, activity and recency and weight is sort of like the, the constellation of, of giving you a pretty good handle. Um, but to your point, yeah, the, the, there's, there's, there's NLP and like what people are talking about. There's quality of what they're talking about. You know, not all PRs are as, as substantial as the other. So that's, that's sort of one um, area that the orbit model doesn't take into account. Uh, that's, that's for sure. But it's, it's a great question. Maybe future versions will do that. And by the way, the docs are all on GitHub. So if you have thoughts about how to model this out, please, <laughs> please jump in and share your thoughts. Uh, people, people have done it before, and uh, yeah. you know, we we'll love love any questions or input there. Yeah. I, I guess you. there's Thank probably you. something here where, um, when you think about iteration and trying different things, um, you know, you covered a little bit about what the team impact was, if or if something that your DevRel team or marketing team or or whatever is doing is quote unquote working, then part of this is, is, is being able to actually try different things. So have a hypothesis um, um, that says, you know, we think that Facebook is gonna be a good channel. And so we're gonna measure Facebook likes or Facebook comments or, or whatever the, 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 the case may be. Um, and, and then you could say, you know, we expect 
this many people in this many roles or, or other things like that. Um, I think that's really great as a framework. Well, people ask me all the time, like, hey, Boris, how do we like grow our community, our, our developer community? And it's not, I don't, I don't know. I've just <laughs> tried stuff over time. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I think it, it's a good, it's a great point. What we see when, when, when groups are applying the orbit model for the first time, you know, we, we generally suggest setting aside a, a month or a couple of few months for iterating. Uh, the, 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 at the highest level, and I, I think I failed to mention this at the beginning, is that the, the goal is really to, to map the, the math and the measurements to reality. You know, it's not to, it's not to try to dictate reality in the sense that, you know, um, for example, with, with activity weights, uh, what you don't want to do is say, well, we're trying to incentivize retweets in Q4, so we're going to weight retweets as a three. Uh, the, it's actually, the, the, what you want to do is say, what are the things, what are the activities that actually demonstrate love in this community based on who we know? And so one, one thing you might do is say, you know, pick 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or however many, uh, you know, community members and like slice and dice and say, okay, like, these three people, these are definitely advocates. Like these are people, I know they're in my orbit one. What are the characteristics? What are the activities that they're doing? How frequently? And then you model it based on that version of reality and then, you know, and so forth. So yeah, the idea is not to uh, game the system, so to speak. And that's, that's something that yeah, we, we want, want to avoid. Um, but, but to your point, Boris, it's de definitely taking the time to experiment and model it up, see what happens, run it for a month, see if it reflects reality uh, and then sort of, um, um, you know, battle test that a bit and then scale it out. So the other big part of, of the orbit model is, is reach. So, so love and reach are the sort of two big components. Love is who's doing what when they're doing it. Uh, and the reach is what is the influence of, of, of these community members. And it's the idea that, uh, you know, gravity is sort of a central concept in the orbit model in the sense that, that entities with high gravity are naturally attractive to other other you know solar bodies in the solar system, uh, the metaphor is fun. It's easy. It's easy to abuse. Uh, but in this case, the idea is that someone with high reach is someone that's more likely to be able to attract other people into your solar system, into your community. And so there's also uh, in the same way you can measure love, we've provided a framework for understanding reach as well. Uh, so this this can get complicated uh, as as can love, but it's you know at least worth discussing. So <laughs> first, defining your signals. Um, for your community, is it social media followers? Is it stars on GitHub? Is it reputation score? For some communities, it might be more about the title and position of their company, or it could be like page rank for their blog. You know, what are the things that, that demonstrate that there's, uh, you know, a high, high reach of this individual? And you can start to give those individuals or give those, those signals of value. So you might say, you know, someone with one to 2,000 Twitter followers has a score of one, two to 5K, score of two. Uh, and then basically just you, you take those values and record them. Uh, some of this information is hard to get at. Uh, some of it's available. Twitter followers, GitHub stars, or GitHub followers is obviously a lot easier to get your hands on. Um, so you might only do this for a certain subset of your community. But the idea is that you would start to understand what is not only the love of the community members, but what is the reach. Um, because there's a few reasons for this. You know, um, in the same way you can increase, uh, you can be proactive about increasing a, a community member's love. You can actually do it with the reach as well. Uh, you can think about um, opportunities to have them do a guest post on your blog or have them on your podcast or retweet their content, <laughs> put them in your newsletter. These are all ways that you can drive uh, an increase in, in someone's willingness to like do more for you, thus increasing their love, um, but also a way to give them a platform and increase their reach as well. Uh, and so over time, you want, you, know, you want this to go up just like love. And you can start, if you're starting to measure it, you can start to ask specific questions about how is it going up over time and what changes can we make uh, to our plans and how is how is we starting to drive awareness and referrals and brand building? Uh, so that with that, uh, this is all modeled out in the Airtable template. You are uh, free to take a look at it, uh, comment on it, fork it, make it your own. And you know, over time, the goal is that <coughs> you can start to to ask these questions that really help you design the member journey and deliver a, an appropriate experience and figure out for every, for every community member based on their love and their orbit level and their reach, you know, how do you engage with them? You know, it, for some, it's gonna be asking to speak at your event. Some it's gonna be, maybe you wanna hire them. Uh, others, it's just like, do you want some swag? And the hope is that with the orbit model, you can start to have these intentional questions because 
you know, the reality is there's almost certainly going to be more community mem community members than there are you. Uh, and so, you know, prioritization is, is whether we like it or not, a, a, a sort of a reality when it comes to community building. So hopefully our, the, the, the framework can help um, model out what's really happening there and help you start to ask better questions and, and, and model things more effectively um, versus either just sort of shooting in the dark or trying to apply something like a, a funnel. So uh, by the way, if, if you're interested in doing this automatically, the Orbit model, the Orbit product actually does this. Um, we spit out a bunch of charts and graphs. Uh, we measure love and orbit levels over time. Um, and then we also have some pretty neat tools to actually drive engagement. So uh, not only do we show you charts, we actually give you a little heads up like, hey, someone had their first PR merged. You know, don't miss it. Um, because I think we've probably all seen uh, the reality is, you know, oftentimes someone uh, submits a PR, uh, someone in the engineering group merges it because it's good, and the community team or the founders didn't see that happen uh, just because things are moving so quick. And, you know, that opportunity to, to shout someone out on Twitter or in the GitHub is like, it's, it's, it's a nice way to, you know, uh, drive love, if you will, um, but it often falls on the floor because of the friction. So, uh, Orbit, the, the product tries to show you these, these things are happening and give you the tools right, right inside the UI to actually go and do something about it. So. Uh, and I'm happy to, to demo the product if anybody's interested. But yeah, with that, that's kind of the overview of the Orbit model. Uh, please take a look on GitHub. Uh, have a look at the Airtable templates. And um, you know, let us know what you think. Uh, we're, we're evolving this over time. You'll see in the repo, there's, um, there's plenty of comments. There's open issues. There's an RFC that, that we're wrapping up right now. And uh, we're really trying to, to, to make sure this is a, a, a conversation that's driven by the community builders themselves and not just us. Uh, so. Um, thanks for thanks for playing along today, and um, please please let us know if you have any questions or thoughts. So, thank you, Boris. And happy to <laughs> happy to happy to discuss you know any any and all of this. By the way, yeah yeah no I mean I think there's a bunch more stuff that I'd love to uh, uh, dig into, and I would love to get to uh, a product demo uh, as well. Cool. Um, uh, definitely, we always love uh, love getting getting that as well. Um, I think there's something really interesting happening here. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, community tools and and this this shift that's happening. Um, I just read uh, Bessemer uh, Ventures uh, uh, did a post about their kind of roadmap for open source venture investing. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, I realize how far we've come in the last 20 years um, where one of the key uh, insights that they kind of mentioned in that in that Bessemer post, and I'll share that link later, I have it on my blog, um, is basically saying that open source um, used to be correlated with low quality. Um, and that is kind of um, flipped, where, where open source is now perceived as, as uh, higher quality or higher value than a proprietary product. Hmm. Um, so as we pile on to community, what do you see happening there in that nature? Are we, are we industrializing these processes or as you say, are we just less shooting in the dark? Like, how do you think conceptually about this whole entire kind of space growing from, from companies to marketing to, you know? Yeah. What, what, a little bit about what we've seen is, um, the shift, hopefully this, hopefully this answers your question, but we've seen a, sh a shift in perception of, of community as kind of a nice to have add on uh, to something that's core to the business and its ability to create value. So I, I would say that my, my context is, um, you know, most of our users are commercial open source, open core. So the, the project and the, and the company are, are tightly coupled versus only just maintainers. I will say we have a number of, um, for Orbit the product, we have a number of just maintainers that use Orbit to basically grow their own personal communities. And that's, that's fantastic. Um, but a lot of my perception is colored by the, the, the commercial open source aspect of this. And so, um, you know, what we've seen is, is at the company level, even, even a year ago, and I would say that, that, that COVID has created an interesting tailwind for these conversations and really accelerated the role <coughs> of community um, broadly. Uh, we, we've seen a maturation of community as a kind of, kind of a, a concept that's, yes. um, you know, kumbaya. I, I hate that term, but like that's that's a thing that outsiders to this thing would say, like, oh, community. Like, people are just what are they doing? Like, talking about what movies they saw. I don't know. 
super, super annoying misconception. Uh, but to see folks like Bessemer and others come on board and say, yeah, like open source is huge, community is huge. Um, there was a there was a, a survey that first round, uh, the venture capital firm first round did almost a year ago. And one of the key insights was that I think 85% of, of, of software founders view their community as a moat, as a competitive differentiator that that couldn't be eroded by by the competition. So what we've seen is is that there's sort of a lag between the market and, and leadership and VC starting to say, yeah, community is important. What's your community plan? Uh, there's been a lag between that and like companies and projects being able to do anything about it. And this was inter interesting. So before we started Orbit, uh, Josh and I had a consultancy called Developer Mode. And we basically just did, we were doing like developer relations and community consulting. And like, we, we started, we had a front row seat to this for where these companies were like, our, our investors say, we've got to have a DevRel team. Can you help us figure that out? We have to have a community team. Like, what do we do? And so it's, it's, it's interesting to kind of be in the middle of that. And you know, it seems like the folks in this call have been thinking about these problems for a long time. And it's like now, for whatever reason, well, there's a lot of reasons, uh, but, but lots of different people are, are having conversations about how do we do community. Now it's a question of, of it's, it's less a question of should we do it? It's a question of how can we do it in a way that's scalable and repeatable and measurable and that's that's kind of where we've we've had a lot of um, luck in terms of timing because as you can see the orbit model is it's it's really focused on the people and the, the member experience and, and driving value for the community but by the way we've got some metrics and math that go with it that can actually show you change over time and that's we think that's kind of what's been missing from a lot of frameworks previously it's like okay like here's here's four steps for your community or whatever some whatever general framework um we, we think the math is important and we're, we're analytics people. We, Josh and I met at a company called Keen.io, which was an analytics API. So like we're, we're data people. We're coming out of this world of, of, of measuring stuff. So yeah, understanding impact is huge. You know, the, previously the, the challenge was you, you, you put a dollar in the community machine and you, you, you don't know what hole it's going to fall out, you know, or what, in what form. It, uh, and, and so I mean, it, to, it, it reminds me of the, of the early days of, of marketing too, right? Before we, yeah. experimented. I mean, I, I will say that, um, so there's two things. So one is, um, it's definitely the kind of thing where, where I have companies ask me all the time, kind of how to do this. Um, and they're thinking about things like all the way from, can I, can I hire the social media intern or the community lead and, and kind of still not taking it seriously. Um, and actually just thinking that there's like four steps um, um, sort of, sort of thing. So, so I think that's, that's very interesting where we, we, we need frameworks like this so that we can even compare and contrast, right? Otherwise we really are shooting in the dark. I will say as someone who's kind of been around for a long time, um, there's a certain piece of me that I need to understand how cynical I need to be about this, <laughs> right? Like these are real things that happen already, right? the fact that we're tracking them doesn't change that they happen. It means that we can actually get better, right? So if we have a goal, yes. and, and, and I think it would be really interesting to apply this, uh, the, the word community, I think, gets thrown around a lot. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and, it's, and in some cases it gets used by entities who would like to capture that community. <laughs> Right, I think there's something to be said about using your platform to lift other people up. That that has to be a part of that. Totally, yeah. I I, I think it's um, on one hand a natural outgrowth of like money coming into a space. Like it changes the nature of the conversations of the people in it. And like the folks who've been thinking about it for a long time are like, who are these people coming in using my terminology, my language, for nefarious purposes? Um, one, one thing that we say, you know, there's a couple of like, I don't know, phrases we use a lot, which is, you know, the sales and marketing funnel is about capturing value for a company. The orbit model is about creating value for the community. And so in our sort of messaging and positioning and our, our educational content, it's like, how do you, yeah, how do you get people talking such that they're working with each other to collaborate and create value for each other? The, the metaphor we have um, is that uh, if you think about an ice cream cone, uh, this that's sort of indicative of the relationship between your orbit and your funnel. Uh, and so if you, if you think about an ice cream cone, the bigger the orbit on top gets, the more that will just naturally, as a secondary effect, drip down to the funnel. And so th this is sort of the kind of the silly way we position the relationship between the community and sort of the more commercial activities of a company. 
And we, we I'm, think I'm that putting way. that into my slide deck. I'm like, fission will capture the melted drippings from yes. our massive community. I'm like, that, that's going to play really well. This sugary melted drippings. That's, that's the goodness there. Because I mean, really, the, we think that, the, and we've seen that revenue is a second order effect of delivering a really excellent community member experience. But in the same way, you, you, like you can't go out and try to make a plant grow. You can't force it. But you can create the appropriate conditions. You know, you can make sure there's fertilizer and water and sun. Um, but but what we're trying to help people avoid is, you know, using the orbit model as like a, a sort of weaponized tool to like drive yes. more leads. This yeah. is something that we're highly aware of. Yeah. Uh, and and culturally, this is this is this is going to sound a bit philosophical, but you know, the existing tools. If you think about like on the on the funnel side of things, like traditional sales and marketing. Um, this, this, this process of qualifying leads and like putting people through this meat grinder of a process, it's cultural, but it's also, it's also enforced by the tools. So if you're an SDR at a company and like your job is like, you can't leave until you send 40 emails. And it's like, that's not creating value for like anyone. And so there's, there's a cultural problem that we're trying to address with, with the tools and the language. So, um, you know, we've got a lot to figure out there, but, but hopefully we're coming from a, from a good place. Awesome. Uh, Austin, uh, what, go ahead and yeah, yeah, yeah. ask your question. Yep. Um, just kind of waiting for conversation to create a space. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I asked, like, uh, I've been working on sort of a philosophy slash framework slash Jira killer slash when you guys came out with the silver model, I was like, oh no, my thing is, is dead, which I don't really care because it's not a thing yet. Um, but I read through the orbit model and it seemed like it was in scope larger than what I was thinking through. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately had a lot of the same sort of uh, language and concepts and philosophies where uh, most of my experience on like small teams or like in agencies has been in, like most of the time those businesses don't know how to put the right developers on the right projects and know and be able to like track their effectiveness on those projects. Right. And so, uh, along with some of the concepts in, in orbit, I'm wondering like how, or if you guys have thought about like applying the orbit model to um, like the like small project level or just like what that looks like in practice, if you already have, and if not, um, you know, if you could just elaborate on some of that. When you, when you say project level, uh, what, do you, what do you have in mind there? So currently my team uses Jira, right? And Jira is a great tool, but it's sort of like a big hammer that might not be useful when you're trying to, you know, I don't know, razor blade and edge off a piece of paper or something. So it, on the different projects I've worked with, uh, the only thing that's really worked for being able to like track and measure like my contribution to a project is having a rubric for story points. Like, so, um, whenever the business comes up with an idea, right? Like I shouldn't just take that idea and just start writing code. Ultimately that leads to, you know, brittle, untested, sort of vague, like unspecified behavior in a UI or something, for example, right? Um, and so- Th th This reminds me of in inner case. source. So there's this whole movement of using open source practices inside companies, Austin? Um, it's an emerging yeah. phrase. I don't know if you've, you've heard of it. Um, and I think this is related. I'll, I'll chase down some links. Yeah. Cool. So I think this is really interesting. And I think the, the related thing that a friend of mine is working on is essentially is not quite the right phrase, but developer metrics where different teams within a company can even say, decide how they measure. Like, so, so my friend was actually working on a process of like, uh, issue opened to shipping business value. So your Austin, I think that's what you're trying to get at is could you use the orbit model to model something like that, right? Yeah, like a lot of the terminology sounds very similar. Yeah. It's just like at a different abstraction level, right? So like on a particular project, instead of, you know, the business pushing tickets onto developers, sort of like the traditional push model or waterfall or whatever, and then developers doing some work and then shipping it over the to the next phase, either UI, UX. And a lot of this integrates well with like, you know, uh, continuous integration deployment sort of terminology as well. Yep. But um, the thing that I've been missing from most of the, the teams that claim they use Agile is none of them actually groom a backlog with story points attached to a concrete like development task. 
So for example, business wants to change some text in the UI, that shouldn't be a hard task. I should be able to get that done in five minutes and have it in production like today. Um, in reality, like that's not how things work um, because the business will create a ticket like that and then add subtask after subtask after subtask, creating soap creep and all sorts of different things and, and nobody's tracking it, right? Um, so that's why I was asking like how some of either the orbit tooling or um, some of the model can be applied like at a smaller scale to an individual project or, you know, they'll say contributor on an open source project or something, right? To be able to track like, is this person doing well or do we need to like let them work in a different language or, um, or maybe have them try to apply their, their love for a particular language in our project and, you know, how does that integrate and does that make the project better or worse and all those sorts of different things. Yeah, I think it's, in, in general, I don't have a great answer for that. Uh, no one, no one's really asked that. Um, you know, uh, I, I think if you think about activity tracking, like the activities, the orbit model are pretty much who did what and when. Um, I, I'm not sure, maybe I really don't grok what you're, what you're asking, but it sounds like what you're asking for is a little bit more of qualitative measures of, of what's happening within a project. I'm not sure. Um, so it's the we, same, we, it's we the, what, when, but like applied to like contributions to like an individual project. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's, that's totally maybe, maybe we are on the same level and, and, and mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, not thinking about it correctly, but I'm curious like what, um, cause I'm seeing something like, you know, somebody's PR just got merged to an open source project, but how does a company take that and, and use that to, to, provide a platform for that developer in their own project, right? Um, in my experience, I think like more often than not, that can be too expensive to get team buy-in for. Um, just using like Haskell and Elm as an example, right? It's like ultimately developers in those languages love those languages and those languages exist because they make certain things a lot better um, with respect to like compile time safety and all that sort of thing. but companies can't just be like, oh, we're going to take our entire TypeScript code base and write it in Elm. And some companies do, and they're really successful with it, but, you know, not every company is like willing to make those trade-offs. So how do you support in a company writing TypeScript, a developer that wants to write Elm? Like the Orbit model theoretically should solve that problem. I think there's a, there's a, that's the really interesting thing about having a framework you can start, uh, I, do you have a recipe section yet, Patrick? We, uh, we don't, I think there's an open issue. And, and uh, do you know what I mean by that? <laughs> I should really define it as well. Like, so, so I recipes think I are, yeah. are like an emerging thing of, of all over the place of, of like, especially things that can be used in a couple of different ways. So like this is, is essentially a like uh, the orbit model recipe for in, inner, inner orbits or something like yes. that of, of applying yes. it within companies. We, we, we have, um, there's some blog posts on our blog that start to get at that and some recommended applications. I think in the original orbit model post, uh, it's just orbit.love slash blog. Um, there's, there's some of that there. We've got, um, we've got a lot of information in our, in our brains, but not, and you know, on paper anywhere. So that's actually a huge opportunity, an area that we want to invest in. Um, and actually in Q4 is, is building out some of those recipes or workflows or, or what have you. We've got a little bit of it in the product uh, where we're starting to like make recommendations actively about what to do next. Um, but in terms of, of content, yeah, I mean, that there are, you're, you're right on. Uh, we, we don't have that though. Oh, I think you might be muted, Boris. Boris, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Go ahead, Gary. Yes, 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 yeah. Uh, I just been looking at Twitter because you tweeted the other day with something with Flip, and it turns out that you are leading in my circle in the uses of Flip, which is which I, I like. I, what I wanted to say, I looked at your, your orbit with the last night. I like to prepare for these talks because it's just so much better. You can have discussion and it looks to me, I love it, but the point is, that you really should be able to apply it at each point. 
So each person in the network, in your network, first of all, they should be able to apply this metric to themselves. And if you, if you do that, then, then, then your whole thing won't be this sort of, sort of uh, exploitative thing. It, then then the, 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 the sum of that, you know, would be much better. Actually, it's already happening. I think uh, I've just seen a demo of Solid, which obviously gives you this personal online database store, which is personal. And uh, they, uh, the BBC and NatWest already flipped. They said, oh, great. If we can, all our customers or viewers have all their interactions with us in their own personal pods, okay, uh, we don't need to write gigantic uh, SQL statements. All the, all the information is available. So that's that really gaining traction. So I just, I flip too. I just realized that this, that the decentralization that's happening is actually also empowering ent ent enterprises, possibly in a positive sense. So they basically taking the clue trains, clues. That's what's happening. That's how I see it. But, the, uh, but really re referring back to your model, I, I, as soon as I said it and read it, and I just imagine these circles, everybody having their own orbit. And, and in fact, this is something I, I really would, would recommend you take on board. I, and I, that, that, is, that is fission, which will actually deliver you that capability. <laughs> Nice little pitch. I think there's something really interesting there. So one of the things that we're exploring, Patrick, is um, flattening stacks. So one of those things was us thinking about um, empowering front end developers so they didn't have to become full stack developers. Um, and, and roughly this fits into kind of a serverless model, but we're, we're taking this a lot further. Um, and then we thought a lot more um, and, and, and the stack, the distance there is between the developer and then realizing their vision, shipping their app, doing the thing that they wanna build. And then we want, went one step further and said, well, why are they doing that app in the first place? Uh, on the other side of the app, it's people again. Uh, so part of flattening the stack actually means mm -hmm. connecting people with the developers who build apps. Um, and part of that is, in fact, empowering developers and giving them better tools to understand and, and work directly with those people. I think what I was trying to say, and I have to, f I have to find the right screenshot. Again, I'm like an old school RPG gamer and stuff like that. So I think what Gary is kind of saying, what it, if you're starting out and you're entering a community, you want to know. I mean, this, this, this is done relatively terribly inside companies as well, going back to Austin stuff. If you want to be... Uh, a level three software engineer, what is the direct path there if you, if you want to min-max that? Uh, if you want to, you know, like, are you going to have to get great at presentations to move forward in this, uh, in this community? If not, are there other things that you can do, right? Every community needs a bard, but if you don't have a paladin, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Like, I, like it, I, I'm being jokey, but this, like, we, oh we, this is kind of there as, as well, right? I mean, the I think- Fantasy metaphors are like totally legit though in, this, yeah. in these kinds of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think it actually goes all the way to, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so, so many other pieces with, uh, with this of, of where you, 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 you need to get to. Um, and if you, if you know what that path is, then you can apply yourself maybe. I think there's definitely, Yuri, I would, I would definitely, we, we know that systems will get gamed if they are too transparent. I guess that's the right word kind of thing. And that can lead to misuse on the other side too. Um, but somewhere in there, there's an aligned incentive of going like, well, we won't, you know, as a community, we want you to succeed. So we want you to, to know that this, these breadcrumb paths are there, but we also want to have the creativity of like trying something new. Can I yeah, just, just is, say, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say that. I mean, this is, this is an area we think about a lot. We, we've opted in the near term to you know, make sure the model makes sense sort of in, for internal measurement purposes, you know, and that the, the math and the weights and the way it's measured all makes sense. You know, maybe V3 of the robot model is, starts to expose some of this stuff more publicly. But the last thing we want to do is create another 
gameable metric for people yep. to uh, yep. get on board with. So yeah, we, we, we get the balance. Um, and yeah, it's, it's one, one thing I will say that, that Josh did. Uh, so Josh, um, before we started working together was the head of DevRel at Algolia. And uh, when he was there, he was sort of working through the orbit model as a concept uh, internally. And they actually, for anyone that was in orbit one, like any of their community members, they actually let them know that. And like, like, Oh, like, welcome, you've made it to Orbit One, which means you're one of our most active community members. And here's just a t-shirt and a shirt and like a Slack channel specifically for Orbit One members. And so they, I thought that was an interesting way to expose some of this stuff without like putting out the, the, hub, the heuristics and the math specifically. Uh, so you, you know that there's a, there's a place, but you know, there's not like a bunch of boxes you can check to, to get there in a sort of insincere way, so. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but I, I mean that's what discuss this discuss discuss what discuss does. It's I mean it's it's awful because I'm at several forums, and every forum I have to go through all the training. <laughs> oh, yeah, you reached it. quality member. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah. I, I think discourse is uh, we 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 talked a little bit about this before, Patrick. Uh, uh, you and I about uh, that and Discord. We didn't really get to community tools. Um, I know I want to be respectful of your time. I would love to get a quick demo in sure. of Orbit. Yeah, <coughs> let's do it. Uh, and by the way, Orbit, Orbit Love, Orbit Model, I kind of almost want you to have a different name for the product. Uh, how, do you, how are you feeling about that right now? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not terribly confusing. It's, it's only confusing in like this specific type of context where we're talking okay. about both at once. <laughs> we, thankfully, we found that it's usually... We're usually talking to people about one or the other, and uh, yeah, it's name, naming is tough. We, the or, the orbit model like makes sense as you can see from a yeah 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 yeah. When we thought about company name, it's like well, that's pretty good. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but the, with, with the orbit is the problem is that that I really think that that uh, this flipping into decentralized or, or people centered architecture. First of all, it solves a lot of technical problems, random and trivial. And at the same time, this, this is what's emerging. So I love what you do in terms of these layers. But if you take, take the, the ripple is better, you know. It's a ripple because then you can have really, really ripples uh, interacting. Because that's really interesting. Hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm really, I'm not knocking it. None, I'm just saying that. the solar this, system yeah. stuff. Let's think big, Patrick. <laughs> exactly, we Galax Galactic. Well, there's the, yes, there's a whole yes, set of yes. string theory that I, you know, we can talk about in the next course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the ripple is a good name. It's getting, you know, or whatever. Uh, we we want to see a ripple project from you by next week, Yuri. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Feel free to do a PR. On. Do a PR on the docs. Uh, okay. What time does this this is officially end at ten? Uh, it... We're in the like. Uh, wrapping up phases of uh, cool. where we don't have a hard stop other than we don't we'll be respectful of your time cool yeah I'll, I'll, I'll walk through a demo um, so a couple of a couple of points of context before I share my screen um, the I'm going to show you that there's actually our orbit workspace so this is where I do my daily work I spend time in this this is a real community maybe you'll see some of yourselves there uh, and and a couple a couple of things to note um, Orbit has a, a number of integrations that we support. So we have a GitHub integration that uh, when you authorize our app into your repo, we um, take a look at the, the, the repos you give us access to. Uh, we, we pull in an activity timeline. Uh, we pull in the members for each one of the, for, for each person that's done a contribution. Um, we also have a Twitter integration. So we pull in mentions and keywords. Uh, discourse integration is coming very, very soon. Uh, but we also ship an API pretty early as well. And so um, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear two primitives uh, with when I talk about the API, uh, because at, at the highest level, we, we try to understand, you know, what are, the, what are the primitives to like modeling a community? And really it's, it's actually the member. So who the person is, uh, social networks they're a part of, notes you've added, tags you've added, like the individuals themselves uh, is one. And then the other, the other is activities. So we talked a lot about that today. It's, it's what someone has done when they've done it. So, the API actually gives you the chance to send in members and activities. So uh, for example, when someone signs up for early access on our website, that actually creates an activity and a member inside of Orbit. And so we have people using the API to, to, to push in uh, like type form submissions, mailing list signups, um, any number of data sources where you want to understand and pull into one place, the activity touch points uh, for your community. So uh, with that, let me jump to Orbit.
let's actually start the demo zoomed in on a specific community member. This is our friend Daniel. Uh, he's been a, been a community member for a long time. Number of things to note. Uh, we've just gone through the demo, which is pretty cool, or the, or the, or the Orbit model walkthrough. So you'll notice love and reach right here, uh, right here on the, the member profile. So these are kind of calculated automatically. This is the love line. This is actually the, the trend over time, uh, going back to January 2020. And if you look under the covers a bit, we actually have this little cool heat, heat map of, of activities over time. I mean, this is pretty in the details, but since we just talked about the model, I wanted to expose some of the, the math as well. Uh, on the left, uh, you've got, uh, anytime you see a purple tag in the UI, this is, this is user added. So I've, I've either typed it in here, or this is a tag has been added via the API. Anytime you see a gray tag, that's actually inferred automatically from the GitHub integration. So uh, we actually go and look at a, a person's contributions and pull back their top languages, top topics, things like that, just for context. In the middle, you have the timeline. So going back eight months ago, we see when, when this person joined our community for the first time, the first activity they did, which was starring the repo, that's what actually created the activity and the member inside of Orbit. Uh, and so other, other, you know, any, any verb that happens in GitHub, uh, as well as mentioning your account on Twitter will create this profile page automatically uh, for you. And so, yeah, because we've got the, the GitHub integration set up, we see the, the timeline here. Uh, so we see comments and PRs on the Orbit model docs, which is pretty cool. Uh, seven months ago, he tweeted about us. So that is in the timeline. Uh, this is a Slack message that I, that I sent in. So we have a little Zapier app thing to, to store relevant conversations in Slack. And then we can also add notes. So it's sort of like a CR, CRM style functionality here where you can add meeting notes, you can add insights, whatever. And anyone on your team can actually see those as well. Uh, he submitted a sticker form. So we have some pretty cool stickers. <laughs> and then actually we're pulling in product usage here as well. So he actually created an account. He's one of our users. And then more recently you have, you have tweets. So really the goal here is, you know, for most groups, community happens in multiple places. Uh, and it's very siloed. And so the hope is to actually pull, pull that data into one place so you can actually understand who a person is. It's orbit model stuff, who did what and when they, when they did it. Um, one question is, okay, you have all this, this information about people that you've added that we pulled from public sources on GitHub, et cetera. What, do you, what can you do with it? Um, one common use case is, okay, we're having a, uh, we're doing a, a meetup in Q4, who should we invite to speak? It's a JavaScript meetup. So we're just gonna type JavaScript. And you see results coming back from the bio, you get, uh, the tags, even names of repos. Uh, and you can even facet this by different things like languages and repos, the number of activities they've done, uh, the types of activities they've done, uh, as well as things like location, if, if we have that, if we have that information. So um, I'm just going to quickly look at JavaScript people in San Francisco. And now I have a pretty good handle on who in my community is interested in this particular topic in this location. So I might take this list, export it, or just go through the list and like email each of them and say, hey, we're doing an event. Uh, like, hey, Alex, like I noticed that your, your love is kind of going up. I probably wouldn't say that. But if I were going to email two people from this list, I probably would pick the ones who are trending up and not the ones who are trending down and might come back to other people. And, uh, you know, oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, I just had coffee with Yuri. Uh, I, need to, I need to add an activity. So, uh, so that's sort of like the, the, the data. Uh, we also have this concept of actions. So... This is, this is honestly pretty new uh, feature set here. We're, we're, we're investing a lot in this area, but the idea is that if we're watching your, your repo for taking a look at your Twitter and your forum, Orbit should be able to highlight these milestones. And so first PR merged is, is one of those. And so in this case, this person had their first PR merged. You click see actions we see on the right, it pulls in all the context from their profile. And on the left, it provides, uh, we provide a sort of a handful of options for you to actually go and do something about it. So we pre-populate the Twitter handle, we pre-populate the link to the, the PR in question. So it's really quick to just come through and like, click a button, share it on Twitter and get that sort of community touch point. Uh, Cause really these, these interactions, they seem small, but they, they compound over time. This is like the daily grind of community building, but the friction is so high that it's, it can, can be hard to pull off. Cause like, you gotta see the PR, you gotta go to the person's page, you hope there's Twitter there. Like you, you go to Twitter you type it and it's just like, you know, a lot of steps. Uh, well, I think the so source of truth is uh, for this kind of information is the huge one. If it's spread across dev team, marketing team, social media team, yada, yada, yada. So even literally just uh, having a spot where all the community info goes is a great start. Cool. Thanks for saying that. <clears throat> and then on the reports page, uh, oh, interesting. 
So it looks like our, uh, our, we completely crashed here, but it's because these are, these are calculated on a monthly basis. So it's looking like interesting. I need to take a screenshot to this door to uh, Josh. We're like, Josh, what's happening? Our community is- Shut evaporated. down the company. We're done here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me adjust the time scale so it looks better. This is what you have to do in your fundraising is you tweak the charts so, so they look better. There we go. Look at that. Up and to the right. <laughs> the community is growing. Um, so yeah, so you'll recognize these terms, orbit one, two, three, and four. Uh, you know, we, we do this automatically for you on the back end. Um, you know, you can toggle them on and off. You can actually see the distribution there as well as the change in love over time. Uh, but we also have some pretty, pretty granular reporting. Um, so at the member level, we show you things like, uh, active versus new, uh, the current period versus previous period. Uh, these, by the way, all these reports are filterable. Uh, there's time options, of course, within activity type. So show me only Twitter or GitHub or API based. You can drill in by repo uh, or organization if you have multiple connected. And you can also filter by tags too. So common tags are things like, uh, you know, ambassadors or MVPs or potential speakers or people who have spoken or like product feedback. And you can actually slice and dice the charts by those, by those specific tags. And then we even make these little kind of billboards of like your new members, your new high reach members and your new high, high love members essentially. So you can you know, really get a sense for who's who. And so common use cases are just like shouting these people out on Twitter, sending them swag, you know, you name it. Uh, activities, we, we break down by current and previous and then show you this crazy chart of <laughs> the distribution of all your activities. This is hard to like get a lot of insights from this chart, but I like the colors. So, um, but it's pretty cool to see in one place, like form submissions with joining our Slack, with like giving product feedback uh, and, and kind of see how those are trending over time. And then for this audience, it might be interesting to look at the GitHub specific reports. So the, really our main repo is the, is the GitHub or the orbit model docs. There's not a lot of activity in that. So the charts aren't gonna look as cool as, as you all's would probably look. But uh, we have some specific things that are around PRs open and merged, uh, members on a per repo basis. So active new members with their first PR over the time frame in question. And we do the thing where we show you you're most active in this PR and members who had their first PR merged. Uh, and then we break down activities by type as well on a, on a, on a per, per repo basis. So um, that's, that can be useful for, for some of our folks. Then we, then we roll that, we roll that up at the, uh, at the workspace level as well. So uh, you can quickly eyeball, eyeball growth. So really that's, that's it. The last thing I'll show you is the activities stream. This is basically just the fire hose of, of activities. I, I keep this tab open most of the day just to see stuff happening. Uh, lots of activity from from our friends uh, recently uh, mentioning the orbit model, so we can see that there. Uh, we see some new new stars in the repo, which is cool. Um, you know, and I usually will reach out to folks as these are coming in. So uh, this is pretty interesting. We have our uh, orbit has a feedback button in the app, and so when somebody submits feedback, it goes straight here, so we get to see it. So really, this is kind of like our our, our cockpit or dashboard or whatever metaphor you want. Um, but it gives us basically a, a, a finger on the pulse of what's happening. And these are also filterable by a repo and org and tag and things like that as well. So for some of our larger projects like, you know, Apollo GraphQL or Circle CI, they don't want to look at this. They want to look at the segmented piece depending on their team. So yeah, so that's, that's the relatively short <laughs> walkthrough. Uh, that's so awesome. Interesting. Happy to answer any questions. Questions. We're just all excited to go off in instrument communities now. <laughs> I go guess I'll it. just like reiterate my question, try to be more specific about it and less verbose, uh, which is like, given the level of activities, if a company is using this, right, and they have 10 developers, how can they zoom in on a single developer and start providing opportunities for that developer to shine, right? Like what, like where do they go in the orbit UI to say, this developer loves Haskell. Let's see if we can throw him on a Haskell project. Or like, how can we make uh, Henley Milner based like languages available to him working on our team? Yeah, I think it's, I, maybe, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, tr give it a try. I, I, we have, we have actually have a thought about that specifically. Uh, so it's really interesting. A, a couple of things tactically, um, we, de we default hide teammates. So you would basically flip on the teammate view and then you probably would do things like drill into the profile. So this is one of our engineers. Um, and so we, we've got topics here, we've got languages. Uh, you can see 
you can filter filter their timeline by GitHub specifically and see which repos they're they're working on. Um, you can also look and see what what pinned repos and what they're doing on GitHub more generally. So you could say, wow, like this person's, you know, they're contributing to Gatsby and and Redux. Maybe we can offer them an opportunity internally to work on one of those projects. I, I honestly nice don't know. I like that it's, detail it's, view. Yeah, the details details view is pretty cool. A lot, a lot of context there. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So I don't, specifically, I don't know. We haven't like thought about that use case, but it seems I, I think it really comes down to is is um, you have to define your activities, and then you have to look at the context of who's doing that, Austin. So I could see a senior engineering lead um, in a larger team, a uh, larger company. You know, looking across teams, resourcing new projects. Uh, I mean, I think there's there's this whole like like good first issue, right? So an activity could be took on good first issue uh, if you wanted to get that granular sort of thing, right? So I think I think the trick on a lot of these things, again, it totally reminds me of pirate metrics where it looks like a very simple framework, but you really, really have to understand and model what you're trying to do. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to use pirate metrics for a second. So a bunch of people use acquisition um, and they're like, okay, someone, someone signed in their email. It's like, well, did you really acquire the person? Because they uh, think of a, think of a mobile app. Like if they download the app and then never launched it, should you count that as an acquisition? Probably not. Or how do you measure activation, which is the next one uh, used it three times in the first week is one way that I would want to see that defined. Otherwise it doesn't count. So you're, you're, yeah. you're, you need to be a little specific about how you want people to move through. So I think there's two pieces. One is there's the raw data of uh, charts, graphs, filtering that Orbit has, which is naturally integrated into a bunch of developer tooling, which is awesome. Uh, and then the next part is the, is the, the company or task specific path that you're going to have to build. Yeah, like, like how does how does a senior engineer go from like orbit level four up to orbit level one? So outside of just like doing a lot of things. Well, that, and that's exactly the thing that that you know. Congratulations! Time to read a bunch of books by engineering leads, who've who've talked <laughs> about this very thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so and and I think we should uh, we should grab a couple of uh, of links to that as well. Um, and, uh, uh, cause it's a great topic to talk about. Awesome. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah. Just like one quick thing, uh, uh, granularity. I remember what, 12, 14 years ago, I worked at a company and they just introduced uh, Microsoft project, beautiful, everything. And when I said, okay, oh, what if we, can we do micro project planning? Can I track my own? And they said, oh, no, no, you can't because if everybody would do that, the whole thing would blow up, okay? But today we are in the world when everybody can do it for themselves. And in fact, we should be able to contribute to the sensor. Then this problem doesn't arrive. You certainly couldn't possibly manage all the metrics on their own for everybody if they had a full metric from their perspective. But on the other hand, it's a trivial thing and it's a much easier thing. If everybody is able to do that, then in fact, your, 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 agglo, your, con, your federation of that knowledge or overview would be richer. And just one more sentence, I completely given up uh, tracking projects and everything I do on, on, on GitHub or this whole issue tracker, because you lose in the issue tracker. I just write in trademarks, that's what I'm working on, and the system sorts it down. And I could, so I could yeah, so, yeah, so what yeah. we're pitching you, it's, it's very simple. It's a little something called proof of activity. Each user gathers their activities. They're Merkleized exactly. uh, in a tree. And so we match them all and we just give you one proof at the top that you just merge exactly. in exactly. and you've got an interplanetary activity trapper, uh, tracker that- Which you can drill down if I let you do that. <laughs> we've talked, we've talked exactly. about a, um, basically a federated badge system Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. An emergent system and the technology is there. I, I, I think I think the um, I think the federated badge system is is super interesting. Um, I think it's more interesting in the in the membership has its benefits. So exactly like you talked to about 
Angolia, uh, Algolia One. Um, I think that's super interesting, and I've, I've long wanted to make that portable in different ways, right? So I think that's a really cool one, and I'd love to talk about uh, collaborating on that specifically. We should we should look at that for discourse forums. Like like that's you, you could do that's, it everywhere else, yeah. but 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 it it has it has the it it has this built in, and it has hooks for it. Yep. Yep. All right, that's interesting. I'll uh, let me circle up with Josh, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. That could be really fun. Yeah, yeah. When, and yeah, um, one other thing I wanted to mention that uh, is another article that I'm going to share is "Exit to Community." Um, that's an ongoing phrase that's happening uh, in a couple of different areas. Uh, just looping all the way back around to some of the stuff we said, Bessemer and so on. So it's affecting uh, capital models. Some of us here come from some crypto land stuff. So there's there's that where where things are truly kind of permissionless um and then on the other half there really is this this discussion uh more regular world of of collective and co-op models uh and 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 things like that 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 all of a sudden you kind of want to know who's adding love to community really strongly right like a key key building block um are the cmx folks really like digging into this yet or not because they're not that tech centric? Uh, CMX the organization or CMX broadly as a concept? But broadly. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're seeing we're seeing interest from um, from the number of folks I would say that fit that fit that mold. Um, and, and sorry, I used I used lingo. So CMX roughly sort of community management experience. Uh, yeah, so that's. That's the, the sort of, I would say the personas that are active users of Orbit currently. Uh, we've got about 130 or so companies on the platform right now. Um, majority, uh, majority open source, open core de and developer platforms, although companies like Typeform are pretty active as well. And they're kind of like straight right. rattling. They've got a little <laughs> developer presence, but they're very consumer. Um, so yeah, so, so the, the, the daily users of Orbit are some, some DevRel folks, but heavily um, community managers, community experience people, directors of community and DevRel, things like that. So, yeah, that, absolutely. And then the sort of maintainer team, open source maintainer teams are another another big bucket of users for sure. But marketer, marketers are using Orbit, product people are using Orbit. It's kind of interesting to see the, the yeah. way it's making its way through other organizations. But yeah, community experience is a, that's a huge, a huge use case for us. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to hit the stop button. So thank you very much. Uh, and we are done.